Diana, great to have you. I want to get your take on this and sort of how the fixed income markets are reacting. You see equities higher, yields higher here in the, in the U.S., sort of a risk on trade seems to be coming back into the tone. Are markets really fully able to shrug off some of these currency wars for now? Yeah, I think it's actually really interesting and perhaps for broader risk markets, quite encouraging to see that for the first time in a while, even the headlines around trade aren't derailing risk sentiment. And there's a few things that are actually playing into that. First and foremost, I think the Chinese saying they're not going to use the currency as a tool in these trade tensions is, is positive for some of the Asian currencies. But beyond that, uh, markets that are sensitive to what's happening with China and trade have gotten hit quite hard this year. So there has been a lot of risk premium built up in some of the emerging market currencies. And I think at some point the market was concerned that we might get 200 billion of tariffs from the U.S. at 25 percent. So the 10 percent was actually a better outcome than what some of the extreme concerns had been. We have a whole quarter to enjoy that 10%, apparently, Deanna. Talk to me about the Federal Reserve. Will it take into account these emerging market reactions? They have been paying attention to emerging markets. Um, it, the, what's happening, though, is not enough to derail the Fed for now. Um, I think the tool where EM concerns start to derail the U.S. is when you see financial conditions in the U.S. tightening very significantly. So if we saw equity markets in the U.S. reacting in a very negative way to some of these uh, tensions that we're seeing around trade, I think the Fed would take that into account. But the U.S. economy is in a great place. The Fed has achieved its dual mandate. Unemployment rates are very low. Um, you have wage, wage growth is picking up. Inflation is above target. So that, that with that sort of backdrop, you, it's hard to see them stepping back from their projected rate path. Diane, I want to get your take on a tweet that we saw this morning from Jeff Gunlock. He's over at Dubline Capitals, their CEO. He was tweeting a lot about the yields that now take a look at a 10-year above 3% and look at a 30-year now above 3 closing in, we should say, on 3.25%. What is your take on the rising yields here in the U.S. and that risk premium that you talked about that you can now get here in the U.S.? Well, our take is it's about time <laughs> that the, the 10 years started pricing what the strong U.S. economy is doing. Um, we have a call that will probably end the year closer to three and a quarter. Um, so the, the rise in rates is not surprising. I think what's been surprising is that it's taken us this long to get where we are, given what the macro data is showing in the States. Um, Atlanta Fair GDP for this quarter is tracking 4%. Uh, GDP growth, we had a 4% print in Q2. So 3% on the 10-year is not a concern. I think, you know, the, the concern should have been, why aren't we there? Uh, come into my terminal here at GTV Go because I also want to talk to you since you're based in London a lot about uh, the 10 year versus the 10 year bond yields that we're seeing. Um, where do you see this going? If 10 year yields keep rising, does that risk premium um, sort of continue to expand here? What's your call on 10 year UK bonds? So it's interesting because to an extent, the reason why the 10-year took a while to price higher and why we've seen the, the slow grind rather than the quick move we'd been expecting in, in the long end of the U.S. curve is what's happening in the external environment. You had an ECB that's been uh, keeping rates very well anchored. You had BOJ as well committing to yield curve control. And in the last few months, you've had concerns around Brexit, around um, Italy, weighing on the boon rate, meaning that the global term premium has been kept very, very anchored. And this has restrained the US's, US, US's curve ability to price in higher long end rates. Now, as these concerns are dissipating, we do expect to see that move in 10-year rates continue higher. Um, and ultimately, if we get past this quarter where we have a lot of um, headwinds in terms of potential risk around Brexit, um, you have ECB exiting QE, um, you had Italy budget. If we can get through this quarter, then it's likely that we might start to see that um, very widespread between the US rates and both European rates and UK rates start to reverse a bit.